Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today we're going to uh, do something yet a little different, just as I do with all my videos. This one's called In the Field, and it's going to cover an installation that we went through. So I'm going to just jump right into it. I pre-configured some equipment, specifically a router, you'll see that in a moment, for a client to install, and I thought it'd be helpful to cover how the installation went, any issues, and how we overcame them. So even though the details have changed, I had to change some bits, I can't show you like, you know, corporate information, that sort of thing. I still feel there's quite a bit of value in the write-up. So no commercial software will be used. And this is important. I'm not selling anything. You don't have to go buy software to recreate this. But if you do have software at work that does some of this for you automatically, this might get you uh, a little more, uh, I guess, a way to understand how that software works. So in this example, the equipment is Cisco 2851, and we're using this IP DNS server feature, which basically turns it into like a DNS proxy, if you will. I configured the router gig01, and it's got a static IP. And the, um, oh, a little typo there. Hey, look, we can fix it. <laughs> so there's this thing, uh, people bring this up quite a bit. There's a little confusion between IP DNS server and IP name server. So IP DNS server, as I said, it turns this device into a DNS proxy. Now this router is a pretty beefy router for this site and the CPU is very low, very little memory is being used on it, so there's not an issue. If this server was being taxed, then I wouldn't want to just randomly turn this on, right? And then there's IP name server, and that's the device itself, the Cisco switch, the router, the access point, whatever it happens to be, um, so it can do DNS name resolution. So for example, within the switch, you SSH into it, ping space, the techfirm.com, and then it uses this IP name server configuration to do a DNS lookup, and then obviously ping what you want to get to. So the router is powered on, connected, and the technician is no longer on site. So I VPNed into the office and I tried pinging to that IP. No success. So in hindsight, I thought I had everything covered, of course, in hindsight. I should have specified the switch port, right? Because this switch, like most switches in most companies, have different VLANs. And I should have told him plug into port X. He probably just picked the first most convenient port and just plugged in. So that's the router, that's the gig, that's the IP, and I have a console cable hooked up to this computer for the install, just for this type of situation. When I can't get to it on the LAN side, I can get into the device through this console cable. Now, you know, you do this a million different ways. I'm not going to get into how to do remote and stuff like that, but that's just the layout. So the switch configuration, even if you're not familiar with Cisco configs, it's a pretty straightforward thing. The interface gigabit 01, and you can see the IP address right there. So, 01, 01. And I've got the IP address and the subnet mask. So now let's see what the interface looks like. So now show interface, gig 01. And you can see it says line up, right? I'm sorry, 01 is up and line protocol is down. So that's kind of important. So we're going to break this down in, in the next slide. So it says line protocols down. That could be anything. That could be a disabled switch port. That could be a bad cable. That could It could be almost... I'm going to say not anything, but it could be a bunch of stuff, right? Here's the MAC address of the router itself, and that's important when we go to the switch in a moment, so we're just making a mental note of that. And this is a great tip. So it says auto duplex, auto speed, media type is T. So it's not telling you what the speed or what the duplex is, which means it's not connected. If it was connected, it would say something like full duplex, one gig or 100 meg or whatever, okay? So the fact that it doesn't say that tells me again it's not connected. So this is telling me it's not connected, that's telling me it's not connected, which again could be a switch port being disabled it could be a cabling issue we don't know yet and down here on the bottom we kind of confirm that input on that port is zero bytes so there's nothing coming in basically so now let's go to the switch and we go searching for the MAC address of that router so show MAC address table address and the MAC address and nothing comes back so as I said before some of the problems might be uh, that could cause this switch ports being disabled bad cable that sort of thing. So I checked the switch, the port is not disabled, so it's not that. So now I thought, you know what, I wonder if they plug the other port of the router in, because sometimes you can't see it in the dark or whatever, okay? So show run interface now zero zero. let's check that. And the description I put in is not used, just to make sure I knew that. And this had a static IP from the previous config that I left there, because it's not being used, so it doesn't really matter. And it is shut down, because that's what I did. So what I'm going to do is enable the port, but the first thing I want to do is make sure this IP is not 
being used somewhere else on that network. So I just ping it from that machine and guess what? Nothing. So I mean when I mean machine I mean that computer, that remote computer at that site. So it's not responding so that address is available so I can enable the port without causing an IP conflict. And now I can check that router interface. Now it says it's up and the line protocol is up. Aha! You see that? Okay. So and of course that's the MAC address and now it says full duplex one gig and 17 packets were in. So now the interface looks like it's up. So I went to go check the switch for that MAC address and I could see it's on VLAN 99. There it is and it's port 36. So unfortunately that other IP is 10.16.30. It's on VLAN 30. So that port that it's connected to right now isn't even in the right VLAN. Again, my fault. I did not specify that. So now what I have to do is look at VLAN 30 and I can see all the ports that are member of that specific uh, VLAN. Then I can do show interface description and I can see which interfaces are up or down to see if there's any ports that are available and, and there are a few ports here that say down 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 down. So we can move it for example to port 16 and that's what we did. So we moved it from 36 to 16 and then I swapped the router port configurations. And as soon as we swapped the port configurations, because I was trying to minimize the amount of work this guy had to do when he got back. So all he had to do is move the port from six, from 36 to 16. I did the config part because it didn't matter which router port we used for that. And bang, everything worked just fine. So I hope these little tips and tricks on checking the switch and checking the router and that sort of thing helps you out in the field. And if you find it helpful, let me know and I'll do more of these types of articles. Have a good day. Bye for now.